Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and I'll start with some announcements. First of all, tomorrow night is going to be part two, uh, or tonight I guess, is going to be part two of the advanced study um, program that I'm doing on this incredible book called Cancer is a Metabolic Disease. And so if you miss class one, you can still listen to the recording and pick up class two and I'm providing you with slides. It's a pretty complicated book, but I'm trying to distill it down in ways that allow you to understand it. Um, Tom Safride is the author and he talks about the fact that cancer treatment is so misguided because it is all based on this idea that cancer is a disease of genetics, which it isn't. And there are so many fascinating discoveries in this book that even though it's essentially a biochemistry textbook, I couldn't put it down when I was reading it. So I think you'll find it fascinating too if you decide to tune in. And then this week we are posting another workshop on our website with Chris Dorca, trainer Chris Dorca, a quick morning workout. It's getting to be that time of year when people start saying, I don't have time to exercise, so we're gonna try to give you quick and easy things to do to keep you on track. And, and Chris is a lot of fun. He's my trainer and Dell's trainer. and. Um, he beats the heck out of us in the gym. So he can beat the heck out of you through our website when you go there and do the things that he tells you to do. All right, I have two things to talk about. And uh, the first thing, well, I'm always excited about what I have to talk about, but I'll tell you why I'm excited about this particular study, is that um, uh, this study that I'm gonna review has been getting a lot of attention, involved a huge cohort, and it showed that milk is associated with higher mortality and fracture rates. No kidding, I've been talking about this for a long time. So um, the researchers analyzed data on two large Swedish cohorts that included 106,772 men and women who were followed up for 13 years. And the researchers concluded from all the data that women who drink three or more glasses of milk a day have almost two times the risk of death as compared to women who drink less than one glass of milk a day. Uh, women who drank more milk also had higher incidence and risk for all types of fractures. Uh, men who drink more milk have a slightly higher mortality risk, not so much on the bone fractures. But um, the study controlled for a lot of factors that included age, smoking, body mass index, height, physical activity, calcium and vitamin D supplementation, and educational level. And in addition to the mortality and fracture risk, the researchers reported there was an association between high milk intake and oxidative stress and inflammation. Not surprising because animal foods are concentrated sources of prostaglandins and prostagl uh, or I'm sorry, of arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid is a precursor for series two prostaglandins, which can increase inflammation levels in the body. So not surprising that that association was found. Results were not reported for varying levels of fat in the milk. They just sort of lumped it all together into milk products. But here is what the researchers said. Our results may question the validity of recommendations to consume high amounts of milk to prevent fragility fractures. Well, we need more people questioning that, in my opinion. Now, of course, commentary on medical blogs. I always like to read what other people are saying about this. Uh, everybody's quick to jump to defend dairy and milk, citing the importance of milk and building strong bones, which I think is an interesting response to this study, since the study specifically showed that milk increases the risk of fractures. And then others advised against making too much of it because everybody knows milk is a great food and you can't get enough of it and on and on and on. But the reality is that most studies do not show that milk is a great food for anybody other than baby cows. And we don't have any members of the Wellness Forum who are baby cows, all right? So the rest of you all out there who aren't baby cows need to drink water and stay away from milk. So I'm excited because this got a lot of attention. In fact, I spoke at a conference a couple of weeks ago where there was quite a lot of uh, talk about this study. So more of that kind of thing. All right, and here's one that not going to surprise you so much if you've listened to me for a while. Meat eating is related to heart failure and death. Now, here's the connection. Um, diet influences the composition of the gut microbiome and also the metabolites that are produced by intestinal microbes. And a new study shows that people with high fasting plasma levels of something called TMAO, which is produced by gut flora from dietary carnitine, have a significantly higher risk of heart failure. Furthermore, those patients with heart failure and higher baseline concentrations of TMAO have a higher risk of mortality. And so TMAO levels became a really good predictor of risk of heart disease, uh, mortality, and, um, and heart failure. Uh, much better, actually, than kidney function and C-reactive protein. 
The other thing, and I'll tell you why in just a second, the incidence of diabetes was higher in people who had higher TMAO levels. Now, where does carnitine come from? If carnitine is the precursor to TMAO, it's most concentrated in meat and egg yolks. Well, what do we eat a whole lot of in this country? Meat and egg yolks. No wonder 40% of the population will die of heart disease in this country. Now, an accompanying editorial in the same uh, journal issue found it puzzling that TMAO levels would be predictive of the risk of heart failure and death and questioned if there was really a cause and effect relationship between the two. Now, I agree. I don't think that TMAO causes heart failure or death. I think it's a marker for coronary artery disease like cholesterol and homocysteine. As for the link between TMAO and diabetes, interestingly enough, if you look at the side effects of diabetes drugs like metformin, they're found to increase TMAO levels. So this is another reason why we should work with diabetics to turn into former diabetics instead of managing their disease. Uh, the researchers noted that there was a wide variety in the intestinal flora among the patients in the study, and the incidence of high of uh, adverse health outcomes seems to seem to rise with gut concentrations of TMAO producing bacteria and the amount of meats in their diet. They specifically talked about the amount of meat in the diet. So um, the lead researcher uh, stated that um, the development of gut bacteria begins at birth. It's influenced by what we eat. But then he went on to say, and this is sort of aggravating, that uh, since research has established that there's a relationship between gut bacteria and disease outcomes, maybe the answer is intervention to change the microbiome. Of course, what he's getting at is, how about let's take some pills and fix the problem um, and, in order to reduce the risk of heart failure and death. And so it seems like every time a connection is made about something, there's a rush to this reductionist approach of, of using um, uh, magical pills to, to solve problems. It would be a much better idea to teach people how to lower the meat in their diet, which will lower the carnitine, which will lower the TMAO levels, and then you end up with a healthier person. Uh, I don't really think that we're going to get much in the way of good results by just giving people who eat an awful diet some probiotics to fix their gut microbiome. And I'm not even sure you can fix the gut microbiome while you continue to abuse yourself with terrible food. So this is an interesting finding. It should be used to promote the value of a wellness forum style diet. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I'll be back on Thursday.